Imagine one of the scariest things that can happen to you in your own home. Really think about it. Hi Crystal Balls, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please think about sticking around, liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you guys could do that right now, please do. It's worth its weight in gold. And after you're done doing that, please go share the love to other people, small YouTubers, your mama pop places, your friends that are hustling. It takes a little bit of time out of your day and it means the world. For everybody else on this journey with me, I highly appreciate it. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here with me. So today for Spectacular Spectacular, we are going to be talking about The Watcher. Now, this is a story that has been done over and over again, but I often question the legitimacy of it. Not that the actual event happened, because it did, but the legitimacy behind the claims of the person writing the letters. So backing up for context, this story is about a husband and wife, Maria and Derek, and their three children who finally were able to get their dream home. And as they were moving in, before they were even moving in, they started getting very strange letters and it was creepy and there's a reason that they ran away um apparently there's a movie that came out recently about this i mean i honestly i don't know how recently it has naomi watts in it um i just learned that about five minutes ago and honest i had no clue that it was out um i don't know if i'm gonna watch it or not but um yeah hey there's that so <laughs> we're gonna go into the details i um I'm sorry if I'm looking over to the side. I have the letters over there. I want to read you guys these creepy ass letters. So just keep in mind that um, nobody knows exactly what has happened. There's nothing but theories at this point. And this is creepy as F. So yeah, let's go. <clears throat> so um, Maria and Derek finally saved up enough money to make their payment for a $1.3 million house on 657 Boulevard, and this is in New Jersey. So the day that they went to look at the house, I believe they had just, just purchased it. Derek found a letter in the letterbox and just a couple of old bills from the previous owner. Interestingly enough, there was already a welcome letter in there, and I use welcome very, very loosely. Um, I'm going to read this letter to you. Um, it was simply addressed to the new owner. It started off fine. Dearest new neighbor at 657 Boulevard, allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. Awesome. Great. Sweet. That's really nice, really neighborly. I'm not a big neighbor person. I like to keep to myself, but hey, this is great. And my mom works for the welcome wagon, so totally great. Get that. Um, but keep reading. Keep reading. 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for subject of my family for decades, and now it approaches its 110th birthday. I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second company coming. My grandfather watched the house in 1920s, and my father watched in the 1960s. It is now my time. Do you know the history of the house? Do you know what lies within the walls of 657 Boulevard? Why are you here? I will find out. Yeah. So, um, apparently... They, Derek and Emma, were going to be renovating the house. And 
um, that was their welcome letter. And I don't know what I would have done at that point. I mean, being, being me, I'd probably just be like, F off. I'm going to keep doing what I do. This is somebody pulling a prank. It's rude. You know, I'm just going to keep going. Um, as time went on, these letters did not stop and they actually started getting increasingly scary and more detailed and definitely, um, said they were watching the family, including their three little children. Um, when they started to, um, when they started to do restorations to the house, they got a letter that was tis tis bad move. You don't want to make 657 Boulevard unhappy. The family was trying to get to know the neighborhood and they had their three children and they were making some rounds and all the kids were out playing. And again, this is pretty early in the moving stages, but they get this letter after the little kids were running around and meeting neighbors and things like that. The letter states, do you need to fill the house with young blood I requested? Better for me. Was your old house too small for their growing family? Or is it greed to bring me your children? Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. The fuck you will? Um... Uh, the envelope had no return address except it said, who am I? There are hundreds and hundreds of cars that drive by 657 Boulevard every day. Maybe I am one of them. Look at all the windows you can see from 657 Boulevard. Maybe I am in one of them. <clears throat> look at, yeah, uh, look out any of the windows in 657 Boulevard and all the people who stroll by every day. Maybe I'm one of them. And then welcome friends, welcome friends. Let the party begin. The watcher. Yep. So of course, at this point, they are freaked the hell out. And Derek calls the police. Um, and there's really not much that they can do. So obviously things are very unnerving. What would you do besides reaching out to the police? You would talk to the previous owners. So they reached out to the previous owners and I believe the girl's name was Andrea um, about this whole situation. And she did say that she had an odd note, very, very similar to what um, Derek and Emma had received. And, um, it was just one thing. They threw away the letter and they never got any um, follow-up letters. They lived in that house approximately 23 years. About two more weeks passes and Maria is painting, doing different things, and she stops off at the mailbox and she sees the same lettering in the mailbox and it instantly drops her heart. She did call the police on this one. Welcome again to your new home at 657 Boulevard. The workers have been busy and I have been watching you unload carfuls of your personal belongings. The dumpster is a nice touch. Have they found what's in the walls yet? In time, they will. This time, instead of the owners, it was Mr. and Mrs. Braddis who are the owners of this house. They finally have names. Again, another letter comes, and this is incredibly creepy. This is, has to do with the children and their names and their nicknames, and it's very, very clearly stalking. I am pleased to know your names and now the name of the young blood that you have brought me. You certainly say their names often. The letter asks about one child in particular whom the writer had seen using an easel inside the enclosed purse. Is she the artist of the family? Here's the full letter. 
Our letter continues. 657 Boulevard is anxious for you to move in. It has been years and years since the rich young blood ruled the hallways of this house. Have you found all the secrets in its holds yet? It, have you found all the secrets that it holds yet? Will the young blood play in the basement? Or are they too afraid to go down there alone? I would be very afraid if I were them. It is far away from the rest of the home. If you were upstairs, you would never hear them scream. Will they sleep in the attic or will you have them sleep on the second floor? Who has the bedroom facing the street? I'll know as soon as you move in. It will help you to know who's help me to know who is in which bedroom. Then I can plan better. Dude. All the windows of 657 Boulevard allow me to watch you and track you as you move through the house. Who am I? I am the watcher. And I have been in control of 657 Boulevard for the better part of two decades now. The Woods family turned it over to you. It was their time to move on and kindly sold it when I asked them to. I pass by many times a day. 657 Boulevard is my job, my life, my obsession. And now you are too, Braddus family. Welcome to the product of your greed. Greed is what brought you here. Geared is what brought the past three families here to 657 Boulevard, and now it has brought you to me. Have a happy moving in day. You know I will be watching. Derek became obsessed with these letters and trying to find some sort of reasoning, some sort of whatever to stop it, because obviously it was like attacking their children. Um... It just didn't work. Um, one more letter came in and these, this family eventually abandoned the house at a great loss, a great financial loss. Um, the house is crying from all the pain it's going through. You have changed it and made it so fancy. You're stealing its history. It cries from the past and what it used to be in the time when I roamed its halls. The 1960s were a good time for 657 Boulevard when I ran from room to room, imagining life with the rich opponents here. The house was full of life and young blood. Then it got old, and so did my father. But he kept watching until the day he died, and now I watch and wait for the day when young blood will become mine again. Yeah. Everything they could possibly think of. They wrote to former housekeepers. They wrote to um, other people who had worked on the house. Nothing. And like I said, yes, this family eventually decided to go its separate ways from this house. So my question is, is this a bunch of bullshit? Or is this somebody who actually is watching? Because before that, there was one letter. Um, and not really any previous anything. Um, the letter, it seemed from the other couple who lived there previously, it was, they took it as either a prank or a welcome letter. They threw it away, but they never got anything else. So why did Emma and Derek continue to get these letters? Um, I don't know if it's because they were children or what. Um, obviously this person has some sort of obsession with money and greed because they are, um, very much addressing that in several of their letters. And this is almost like the perfect crime because it could just be somebody being an asshole and pranking this family by saying this stuff and torturing them. But no repercussions can happen because nobody knows who it is. So my first question for my cards is, is this a real thing? Is this real? Is this a joke? Is this a prank? So, um, is this a real thing? Um, interesting. That's not what I was expecting. A happy family. So, um, this is a good card. This is the 10 of cups and this is one of the luckiest cards in the deck. Um, 
maybe the intention was they were happy. They were honestly happy that there was somebody there, but demented as F. Celebrating. Three of Cups. This is a celebra celebration and embracing. This is weird. So, um, here's the watcher. Okay. Here's, okay. So this is the person that self-proclaimed them as a watcher. They are presenting in this sort of almighty, strong person. Um, it does not necessarily mean that they are male or looks this way at all, but they are definitely presenting themselves in a very high, um, high and mighty role and also very, um, very self-aware, but also there's a lot of egotistic there. Um, they are definitely watching. So what the hell is this all about? All right. Is this a actual, um, was this something that was actually done via generation or is this something that just was made up recently? Recently could be the last 20 years. So is this real? King of Cups. Um, this is younger. So it does kind of feel like it was passed on. Uh, yuck. Okay, so two cards came out together. Um, so this one is the Seven of Cups. I'm getting a lot of cups here, which is telling me female energy. Um, but also very open. You can also narrow down the astrological sign on that. But this is definitely somebody who is obsessed with greed um, themselves. They really wish they had the stuff that other people did. But at the same time, their obsession is very unhealthy. Very, very unhealthy. Um, I do see a lot of fantasy, fantiful thinking in here. So this person does not have, um, touch with reality. Really. Um, this person really is, um, very mani manipulative as we know, but there's not a actual connection with reality here. The other card I pulled out was the queen of swords. So this is somebody who is willing to defend and this isn't, the mother. So this is somebody who's willing to defend that house or this legacy. Um, I think this is a legacy of delusion. I don't think there was actually anything there that was the catalyst. I feel like there was possibly mental illness that was involved with this. And um, it, the person the new watcher was raised in this and I feel like we're very sheltered and didn't necessarily have anything else in their life going on that they could grasp a different set of reality. Um, now I'm not making light of any sort of mental illness at all. I have a mental illness. It's completely fine. And guys, there's help out there. Trust me, there is help out there. Um, but I'm not making lightly. I'm, kind of reading what the cards are telling me. Um, is this watcher a threat to this home? Because obviously this family isn't there anymore. And some of the things that they said seemed to me very threatening. Were they an actual threat to the, to the family and the children and anybody else who comes into this home? So there's a fine balance here. Um, I believe the threat is money. I think this person probably has been in, in this house many a times and has stolen things. Um, I think that's part of the reason why they watch the house so much. And, um, I do think they finance some of the things of their selves of going into that house and stealing it. I also feel like there's a balance of reality here. Um, do I think they would cause physical harm to them? No, but I also feel like there's such an obsession with this house that it feels like a personal attack to them if anything is different. Um, yeah, it's all 
money. Like they're looking into their world and seeing money, 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 perfect family, dogs, love, happiness, light, things like that. And this person cannot distinguish fantasy from reality. And it, it's honestly, it's kind of sad. Um, if there were to be some sort of violent outburst, I don't think this person is capable of doing it anymore. Um, given the age of someone who ran out around the halls in the 60s, um, you would, you know, that can be a child. So, you know, that was 50, 60 years ago. Um, yeah, this person would not be able necessarily um, allegedly, supposedly be able to do harm themselves, but it doesn't mean they wouldn't do, get somebody else to do harm. Um, this is their world. This is literally their world. Um, it is all a world of delusion. I feel like if it was disrupted in any sort of way that they would, this person really believed in the boogeyman. I really think his father or other, his, their, their father spoke to them of fantasy, um, stories, legends, things like that. And I don't think this person could distinguish the difference between reality and a fantasy, but the story became their world. And do I... Was there an actual previous watcher? There's so much delusion here that it's definitely hard to tell. Um, I feel like this is somebody who was feeding a story to this particular person, to this watcher. There was a story fed to them um, over and over and over again. And it wasn't real. It was a story. But this person can't distinguish between reality um, and the fantasy. They really do see themselves as almost like the leader, the ruler of the street, almost. It, it, it's so strange. Um, is there anything in the halls? Is there anything spooky there? Um, I'm going to tell you yes. Because I, I can see it before I pull a card. So um, there were children's games that were played. Um, little kids went around and did some stuff in that house. They tried to... Um, they tried to hail Satan. They tried to get demons. They tried to do things in that house. But from a child level. And it never did anything except scare them. Um... I don't necessarily feel there's anything wrong with that house. It doesn't feel like there's some deep, heavy secrets behind their walls. Every house has its secrets. I mean, the house I grew up in was the third house built in the town that I grew up in. Trust me, there were secrets in the house. There's probably secrets in the foundation, but it is what it is. You know, I used to think the basement was a porthole to hell and... I am, um, we found out actually after my father died, I was sitting out on the porch with my brother and a person came up and said that they used to live in that house and their brother was an iron, in an iron lung and amazing, amazing that that happened. It was just very strange. Um, but yeah, it tells me that the ho houses have a life of their own and they have things happen to them, both good and bad. Um, Again, I'm seeing, a, I do see passing this on from um, father to child. Um, however, it got messed up somewhere. I don't think there's anything really deep with this outside of honest harassment and being kind of rude, but also trying to elevate self. There's a lot of selfishness in here. I don't see an actual physical danger. Um, houses have their own secrets and things that happen to it. And yeah, you run the risk of whatever being in your house with every single time you purchase one. It's the same as an apartment. It's the same as staying in a hotel. You run a risk there. Um, 
And it can be very, very scary. But would I have ran at this point? I don't know. Um, if I really believed that my children were in danger. But let's just see here. Were these kids ever actually in any danger? No. This is a tight balance that this person held on to. It was money that, that, was, a, that was the drive. Um, money and obsession. Look, everything is on money. He's got his feet directly in the money. His money is on his hands. His money is on his mind. Mind on the money and the money on the mind. This is exactly what it was all about. It was an obsession with money. It was an obsession of not being able to have the things that what he believed other people could have, should have, um, but they're not getting the same thing in return. And it's really annoying. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting here. I don't think, um, there is a religious implication here with this particular card, but I think this person believes themselves to be that type of figure, a hermaphrodite, a religious figure, someone who is the watcher, who visually does it, is almost like a religion to them. It's not. This is not a cult. This is not a... It's, it's very unfortunate that there are some sick people in this world who do things like this and harass people out. And I have seen that done in many other places. You know, it's driving property values. It's whatever the case may be. People drive people away that they don't like for whatever reason. Do I think they were kind of watching the house? Sort of. Maybe. But I don't believe that the current watcher can tell the difference between figments of reality and stories. And I feel like they are they're very sad people. Um, and I, I don't think there's any redemption for them right now because there's no grasp of what is real and what isn't. So that's my scariest story of The Watcher. What do you guys think? What's your theories on this person? Do you think that they were just kind of jerks and trying to get people out of the house? Do you think that they were mentally ill? Or do you think this is something much more sinister? Let me know down in the comments. Until next time, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Remember, every single day is a gift. Use your time wisely. And I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.